Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. Gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Oh, real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gave me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. And that is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Simple Bible Study Podcast. Just a little Bible guy singing uh, to start this uh uh, Bible study off. Hey, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. We're picking up today in the book of Romans at the fourth chapter. So as you grab your Bibles, um, we're going to open up in a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for being real and being exactly what we need in life. Father, we pray that you would give us the understanding of your word. Give us what we need from this Bible study. We pray it in Jesus name, of course. Amen. And so we come to the fourth chapter of this 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 book of Romans, this this great theological treatise uh, written by the Apostle Paul to that church at Rome uh, all those many years ago. And so, uh, you know, Paul is the the author here, and any any author or any good teacher like Paul is, once they teach on a subject, they're going to give examples, and the examples are to help the listener or the the you know the student understand better. And in Romans 4, this chapter we're going into now, Paul is going to give us a couple of good examples to look at in Abraham and David. You see, Paul, in the previous chapter, chapter 3, he's just taught us the way to be set right with God, or to be in good standing with God, to be saved. And the way to do that, by the way he concluded, was to come to God by faith just by trusting him, putting your hand in his and letting him lead you. Uh, And so, uh, you know, many many have taught that uh, this was uh, at this time anyway, this this would have been uh, thought to be some new and strange idea. Uh, And, 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 you know, as Paul was explaining this, of course, to many people who were Jewish, uh, who understood the law of Moses as the way to be made right with God. But Paul um, is, is explaining that it was not only this is this uh, the way to be made right with God now, but Paul's going to explain it was always the way to be made right with God, even when the law uh, was entered. And he's going to explain to that. He's going to explain that to us uh, as we as we go through here. Actually, uh, he, he's going to explain that faith was always the way, the way to God. So Romans uh, chapter four, verse one, what shall we say then? that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh is found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. You see, as we said, Paul has brought in Abraham, who is the father of the nation of Israel. Back in Genesis, God called Abram, he was called Abram at the time, but God called him, to leave the land where he was living and to leave his father's house and his family behind and then to go to a place where God would lead him. And that if he he did as the Lord said, that the Lord would start a great nation through him. And, and, And you know, that had to be tough. I mean, go ahead and leave everything you know. Go ahead and leave everything you know behind, everything you used to, and just just go because I'm telling you to go. Go sight unseen to a place you don't even know about. But you know what? Abram did it. He believed God, and he believed that God would take care of him. And by the way, the question for you and me is, do you and I believe that? (laughs) Do we believe that God will take care of us in this life? And so Abram gets down uh, down there to the uh, the new land, and and he that the God has led him to, and he doesn't have any kids, and he's getting old, and God has promised to give him enough children to start a whole nation, and yet he doesn't even have one child. All he's got is servants to uh, to be his heirs, and uh, there's one one servant by the way he named um, uh, Eliezer, 
was the one who was going to be his uh, his heir that would inherit all of his, his his things. He wasn't even related to him by blood. And so let's turn let's turn there to Genesis chapter fifteen, uh, back in the first book of the Bible, Genesis fifteen and four it says, "And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, Abram, uh, Abraham. Later he would be renamed." The word of the Lord came unto him saying, this, your servant, Eliezer, this shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth from out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed, now listen to this, Abraham believed in the Lord. Abraham believed in the Lord and he, the Lord, counted it to him for righteousness. <laughs> he believed God, friends. He, the God he couldn't see, the God he couldn't touch, the God who didn't appeal to any of his, his senses, the, the, the eye, the ear, the touch. Uh, God didn't appeal to any of his senses at all. And yet, this God, who he couldn't see, he couldn't hear, he couldn't touch, he couldn't smell, he couldn't taste, uh, none of his senses uh, uh, told him that there was an actual God for him. And yet, this God, that he didn't, that, 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 that didn't appeal to any of his senses, uh, he believes him. <laughs> He's got every reason not to believe him, and yet he does. And when he does, God says he's righteous. And that's what God does today with you and me. Everybody knows John 3, 16. For God so loved the world uh, that he gave, the only, he gave his uh, only begotten son and whosoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the question is, do you believe it? Do you believe him when he says he'll save you? He'll make you righteous. Well, like Abraham here, if you believe him, he says, you are righteous with him. You are saved. And this is where somebody's going to jump in and say, hey, hey, Bible God, don't you know what James says? <laughs> you talking about faith and believing in God. Don't you know what, what the book of uh, James uh, says here about, about the same thing? And at James chapter two, we're going to turn there real quick. James chapter two and verse 14, because we're talking about being set right with God. We're talking about it that is done by faith without works, as Paul has said. But listen to James in chapter 2, verse 14. What doth, it, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yeah, man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, and thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. <laughs> and so somebody's going to say, after we read that, they're going to ask, how can you, Bible guy, and Paul say that a man is just or saved when he simply does no more than believe or has faith? We can read a little more, James. James says, seeth, at verse 22, seest thou how faith hath, how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made uh, perfect. And so it, it seems to be a contradiction here uh, because it seems like Paul is saying uh, we are saved, we're made right with God, we are made righteous by faith, but it seems like James is saying no, it's by works. It's by what we do that impresses God. Well now let's see if we can clarify <laughs> because there's no doubt that faith and faith alone saves a man. There's too many scriptures to, to, that you'd have to throw out uh, to claim that that wasn't true. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians, the second chapter, that we are saved by grace through faith, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
And so you'd basically, if, if, if it was more than faith, if it was something you could do to impress God and get you saved and righteous, you'd have to throw out the whole New Testament just about. <laughs> but the question is not, is it by faith? The question is, what kind of faith? Suppose I walked into the room where you are sitting in right now as you listen to this podcast. And I, I said, um, listen up. I just found out some information. Somebody has left a bomb here in this room. And in the next minute, it's going to blow up and kill us. And then I just stood there uh, eating my apple or sipping my coffee or whatever and didn't move. Well, I hope you would look at me like I was an idiot or something. <laughs> I hope you, you say, what in, the wrong, what in the world is wrong with him? But suppose instead of walking into that room where you are, I came running in, busting down the door. And I was yelling at the top of my lungs, somebody left a bomb and it's going to blow up in a minute. And I grabbed you by the arm and was trying to drag you out. <laughs> well, you would say he really believes that he may be crazy. <laughs> there may be no bomb and he may be out of his mind, but he really believes that. Well, what's the difference? The difference is in how I reacted. <laughs> See, what you believe changes what you do. And if you believe that the Lord will save you or has saved you, brother, what you go, what you do is going to change. And it is it, 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 what that is, that is saving faith. James said, even the demons believe, but that type of belief that doesn't change you, that belief, the, the, the type of belief that doesn't change you doesn't save you. <laughs> But saving faith produces a changed life. It leads to holiness. Uh, saving faith makes you want to live for him. Saving faith makes you want to give up your sin and live for God. Saving faith makes you want to live a life pleasing to the Lord. Saving faith will make you say to that brother, as James was, that James was talking about, uh, 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 that sister that was destitute, that didn't have nothing. Saving faith would make you say, hold on, sister. Not not uh, being depart in peace and be warned and filled, but hold on. Let me give you my coat. <laughs> let me give you something from my table that you may eat because I am saved and I know there's a God in heaven who's watching everything that we do. And I want to please him. <laughs> That's what saving faith does. And so we are saved by grace. We're saved by faith. Yes, but fa but 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 it is the the faith that changes us. Uh, as as the uh, great uh, preacher whose name escapes me at the moment said uh, back in the olden days, it is faith alone that saves. But the faith that saves is not alone. <laughs> it comes with a changed life. It comes with a renewed. Uh, 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 a renewed outlook and a determination to live a life for God. You can't tell me you're saved by faith, that you've put your trust in God and you have not looked to change your life. Can't tell me that. You're a liar. <laughs> you're a liar, friend. If, if that's if that's you and you need to repent and turn to God and, and turn to him with saving faith, the faith that puts your whole life and your whole trust in him. And Paul says at verse four says, uh, back in Romans 4, now to him that worketh or earns is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. What Paul is talking about here is the, the faith, the belief that leads to works, leads to good works and a righteous life. It all starts with faith. Yes, faith without works is dead but also works without faith is dead. <laughs> Let me say that again. Faith without works is dead, but works without faith is dead. You see, the problem with the religious programs is that they teach that doing good makes you right with God. Doing this, giving out our booklet, uh, going down and uh, 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 going down to Mexico and, and feeding the hungry and all that type of thing. And then nothing wrong with all that, but the, the, the religions teach that those things make you just righteous and saved with God. But no, sir, it does not. <laughs> Believing God first, putting your trust in God first, makes you right with God. And the believing leads to doing good. <laughs> I hope I've explained that right. 
if you if there's any questions about that, feel free to, to put put them in the comments here and we'll address that. But I just want that to be clear. We are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have not earned it. We have not deserved it. But God has given it to us because we trust it in what he's done in Christ. But that faith that we put in God, that 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 determination to trust him leads to a changed life, friend. It leads to a life of holiness. It leads to a life of righteousness. And if it doesn't lead to that, it's the wrong kind of faith. In fact, it's no faith at all. We thank you so much for joining us and we pray that you'll join us again next time. Until then, hey, God bless you folks.